Hi there, I'm the Vegan, and today the music you hear is not the mixer sound, uh, it is the dehydrator, and it is about staple foods today. Today I want to show you um, how I prepare my, I begin to show you how I prepare my, one of my most important staple foods, that foods that are um, pre uh, prepared in advance, take some time, you have to soak, you have to dehydrate, you have to wash it in between, and put it in containers, and you can uh, store, it, store it in a cupboard. Yeah? And then you can, um, for a week or a month, however, how long it, ever it takes, it uh, lasts, you can um, quickly combine some delicious uh, meals, and it uh, takes only minutes to pour these things together, to make a nice breakfast, or to um, grind the flour, or yeah, um, you can put it into a milk, yeah, you uh, make a cake out of it, or yeah, so many things, sprinkle over salad. Um, it is a buckwheat is today. There are many kinds of staple food, and the buckwheat is, is a very healthy cereal. I show you um, how I soak them, how I um, wash them, how I dehydrate them, and then the, the product that is uh, ready to use. So this is the buckwheat, where the filtered water is pouring into the pot to prepare it for soaking over the night. And tomorrow I will drain it. I show you that too, because it is an important process in the case of buckwheat, because of the gel that is coming out of the buckwheat. So, wait and see. Well, this is my buckwheat. I soaked it overnight. And it is in the water. So, oops. The water, just water. Soaked water, soaking water. This is my colander. And this is my, yeah, little bowl container for the colander to put in. These tools are amazingly important. They're very inexpensive, but I need to do them every day. Almost, uh, at least um, to prepare my staples and to wash my greens and my herbs and everything. I get them from the garden. And um, now I show you how to wash, how I wash my um, buckwheat, my soaked buckwheat. Because of the gel that comes out of the buckwheat, it has to go, has to be washed off, and then it can soak and it won't rot, it won't get sour. So you have to wash your cereals and your grains or um, your seeds, if you soak them regular or irregular times, because if you don't soak them, and you don't wash them and rinse them, and um, then they will uh, get sour, moldy. So this is not good. It's important to do it once a day, most of the time. You just put it into a colander, let the water run through. And you do it several times. You could use this water to, to flower your uh, plants. It's very nice. Usually I do that. I'll be on vacation soon and uh, so the water won't be helpful anymore. So this time I, I will just or but usually I keep it. So again, I do it another time, second time, you see, here's the colander, under the colander there is a pot, a, a bowl to keep the water, so it can swim a little bit. Soak it a little bit and rain and rinse and rain. Um, pour away the water. And again, I do the third time. Listen to the sound of the water. And you feel the elements. You have a pretty close to nature now. And I feel that it's important to feel my produce when I prepare food for others, or for myself too. And this is a very um, emotional process. You know, I give something, very uh, takes it in, the other person takes it in. And so they have to trust you, they have to trust your chef. 
you cook for others. This is a very close relation, and, um, and then it's so. Um, I want to feel what I do. I want to have a contact to the earth and to the produce. So I would like to wash it. I'd like to show you these, um, these very usual and regular and very simple processes. Because um, what I want to show you in, in my cooking classes, cooking shows, I want to um, transport a feeling to you uh, uh, that you can um, have this feeling too, uh, to the process, to the uh, to the base, the elements. This might be enough. So I put the water away, and uh, this will remain here, my colander, on the floor. And this will go to a dark place, and it can sit, and it can sprout. I will put a little plate on it, on top, like this. Yeah, it has to fit. This is okay. Oh, this, is too, this is too small, you see. The larger one, this one is perfect. It can stand like this. It can sit at some place where it doesn't disturb me. And um, tomorrow I show you how I do the rest and when it really begins to sprout. So thank you for bearing with me and have a wonderful day. Friends, um, next morning. I'm going on to wash my buckwheat sprouts that have been soaking, now they're sprouting, and uh, every day I have to wash them. See the plate I put on top, and they're still uh, giving me a very jelly. I will show you, see, they are always be already beginning to have these little tails. Can you see? Little tails everywhere. Mm -hmm. That means the sprouting has been completed. Because if you sprout them a little bit too long and the tails get too long, then they begin they're beginning to get bitter. So just the small tails have to be seen and um, the most important process has been completed. So I washed them the last time, and rinsed them, and I show you how to use cold water. I like cold water, like in nature. And just fill them up with water. In the colander, and the colander is in the bowl. And I put my hand into them to stir them a little bit. So all can be washed. Today I'm um, lucky. Because uh, my, my um, neighbor, he offered, he's a good friend of mine, he offered uh, to take care of my plants. So uh, I will um, use this um, water from the soaking, from the trouting. Uh, this is very um, nutritious, nutri nutri nutritious, rich, nutrient rich, so nutritious. And um, nutritious, oh, that's the word. Yeah, uh, there will be. Um, I will use this water for my. For my um, for watering my flowers and my plants on the balcony, because uh, here my watering can, as you see, and um, I will put the, the water from the. I don't put it away, the water, because then you don't need any fertilizer. So take it out of the water here. Do it one more time. You can very well 
move into the pet water if you have a nice, uh, a good, uh, in Germany it is possible, we have a pretty okay the water. I wouldn't really drink it because um, there are too many ingredients you wouldn't like in your body so much. For this I have this, I have this um, water filter. It's easy to, to install, it's inexpensive and uh, every six months or so you just buy another cartouche, another filter inside and then it's 30 euros, uh, 35 euros, and we have here, and uh, I don't need to buy any more mineral water since I have that. So, once more, maybe I can do it here now. I'm not sure. I don't have any water on my floor. So, so I'll do it three times. First is to, work, to make it to put, bring out the growth spots. The second makes it a little bit handsome, and the third one is to give the final touch. These are finally guys they will remain in the blender. For a little more, sitting on this, sitting on this um, little bowl, so I can, I can rinse a little bit more. See like this. A little bit water come out, come out of it, and then after that, I will put them on my dehydrator non-stick sheet and um, and with crispy buckwheaties in a while I'll show you. Here we are again. They have been rinsing for a while so most of the water is out now and dehydration will be easier without that water, excess water. So I have a big spoon in my non-stick dehydrator sheet on the tray of my dehydrator Two of them, I guess two will be enough. Because you in the background you hear the sound. This is my already my dehydrator rocking. And um, already crackers are in there. And of course I will have it full so it can work more efficiently. So I put these buckwheats right in there. I spoon it on there, that's right. Maybe half would be okay, half of the quantity, so they have a little bit space, not too thick a layer, that the air can always circulate through them and so they will be dehydrating not too long. two more layers, two more trays beside of the one the ones they are already occupied with my crackers. So this one will be the, these these two one will be sufficient for the buckwheaties. They're not so dense like a doll. The air can always go through. So, they staple food day. Usually I do it on Sundays, there's more time. And um, then I have all the week, can enjoy these delicious staples. <laughs> well, once they are done, I come back and sure. here we are. Black wheat is ready. See, they have been dehydrated until crisp. It took uh, maybe 10, 15 hours. And you can see the little tails in here, you see, they're still there. And now they are very crunchy and nutritious 
And um, if you put it in a fruit salad on, on the bottom and cut some fruit, put it on top, and then you can wait for an hour or so, or maybe two hours, you will see. These will turn into something very fresh, even fresher than from the field. Yeah, you have you have to try it yourself. It's an amazing, it's an amazing dish. I will show you how I flip in my glass containers. These glass containers are very useful. They are very expensive. You come with your produce from the grocery shop, and then you wash them and clean them. And then you have these um, metal lids and these glasses because the little flies and they won't penetrate to the glass. And the plastic bag, when they, you get some rice or anything from the grocery shop, they are mostly in plastic bags. The little flies, they can eat the plastic and lay their, their eggs into the produce. And then it is ruined because they, the eggs will um, uh, deliver uh, more, more friends and uh, they will eat it, uh, the, all the produce and you can you know, eat it anymore. So, I prefer these glass containers here, and I try to fill these glass containers with my dehydrated buckwheat. I hope this is a, a way to do it without wasting too many of them. You see, I put my hands inside, forming a little exit. So they will exactly know where to fall and not to another places on my floor or on my cutting board. Pretty much all of them have found their ways. So this is good. Close it firmly and there's another one. Can be filled. Again, see my hands in here, the thumbs show the way. And this should work. <coughs> First, when they come out of the dehydrator, uh, you have to wait for uh, maybe 10 minutes or so before you fill it into the containers and seal it because otherwise they will be too warm and when they are warm there is still too much uh, water in them because the warm air or a warm uh, corn can um, contain more um, water, yeah. humidity. So let it cool down a little bit and then they remain crispy forever. And they are sealed, of course, you have to seal them with containers. See, I have two nice containers more than a liter, buckwheaties, they will last for maybe a month, if I eat every day. So, see you very soon. I'm very happy with my new buckwheaties.